Are we seeing a different Harden than in years past? Because it feels like he's next level. Not to me. Not to me. It's, it's, it's more the same. It's just that he's called upon to do a little bit more of the same because of the absence of Chris Paul and the fact that Trevor Rees is not there any longer um, and Mike D'Antoni being the kind of coach that he is where he will milk you in terms of your talents, uh, to, you know, till the, well, till the well runs dry. That's just who he is. Ask Kobe Bryant and that last year that we saw Kobe Bryant healthy, Max, when Kobe was averaging about 45 <laughs> minutes a game and, and ran that Achilles heel right into the ground. That that That's Mike D'Antoni. Of course, he doesn't want you to get hurt or anything like that. I'm certainly not trying to accuse Mike D'Antoni Tony of that, but Mike D'Antoni is one of those guys where it's not just about his system. He finds that one player that, ex that, that exemplifies everything that he wants that system to be personified by, and he runs it into the ground. That's who he is. And so you got a guy in James Harden. If you want to give him credit for anything that might be an aberration from what the norm was, is that when Chris Paul went down, uh, combined with, them, with their losing tendencies at the beginning of the season, Harden said, the hell with this. Give me the damn ride. We ain't losing. We ain't going to fall apart. I'll carry this damn team on my back if I have to. And he's going about the business of averaging 45 in the month of January. He's been nothing short of sensational. He's got about three 50-point uh, games this month. The dude is on another level. Make no mistake about it. And 21 consecutive games of 30-plus, it's, it's phenomenal, no doubt. But to me, it's still more the same because I'm not seeing him do anything that I know he can't do it in terms of – I'm not talking about in terms of number. I'm talking about in terms of style. He's doing what he always does. It's just that with Chris Paul out and the team changing a little bit, he's taking most of the shots. That's all. But they're also winning most of these games. They That's what's West. insane about it. Yeah. They're winning. In the West, they're winning with James Harden doing this. Mm -hmm. I love what I'm hearing from James Harden, by the way. Mm -hmm. He's all-time great. He goes, oh, you can't say – you can't put me there yet. Because, Stephen A., I think we are seeing a different James Harden, and it's reflected in that attitude. He knows what he's got to do. Mm -hmm. He's got to win a chip. He's got to do it when it matters most. He knows that. By the way, when I sit here and I say James Harden, like he hasn't done it under pressure. He's a significantly worse player under pressure. He is the poster child at the moment for choker in American team sports in the sense that he is MVP. That means the best in the regular season in a league with LeBron James and, and Kevin Durant and Anthony Davis and the Greek freak and all these incredible, oh my God, we've never seen it players. He's the best until it matters most. And then he's not. That's a huge fall off. He is aware of that, it sounds like to me. Mm -hmm. And he knows he has to do something about it. When I question whether or not he can, I'm not saying he can't. I'm saying he hasn't done it yet. And Stephen A., when we compare, let's say, Jordan to, L to, to LeBron, um, one of the points you bring up is Jordan arrived in the league as a killer. LeBron had to get there. I don't hold that against the guy. I don't hold it against Harden because, to me, it's more interesting. It's the journey, the distance traveled. It's the journey. And I did see signs last year in the playoffs that he is getting over whatever that is, especially on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. And he was taking good shots. They just weren't going in, mm -hmm. but they got to go in. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is Harden different? And you touched on it. This is just the extreme version of what he could do, right? Where did this really start? This whole style of play started with Rick, with, with Rick Pitino's bomb squad on the Knicks, Stephen A., back in the day when we were kids. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark Jackson and Gerald Wilkins. Trent Tucker was a great three-point shooter. But most of those guys weren't great three-point shooters, but they were competent. And he was just like, we're going to take a lot of them. You know why? You get an extra point for them. So they took a lot of them. What, what Mike D'Antoni did was take that to its kind of absurd extreme. All I want is threes and free throws. Or layups, you know, and dunks. We want everything in the paint or behind the line. And James Harden is his ultimate muse. Almost every single point James Harden scores <laughs> is either behind the three-point line or at the free throw line. Like, that's everything. So is it a different James Harden? I know what you mean. No, this is his style of play. It's just the most extreme version of it. Yes, but that means to me it's different. It is, let's take this philosophy as far as it can possibly go. We're seeing it with Harden. The only question then is, can you win doing that? And in the regular season so far, incredibly, as a one-man band without his main support in CP3, now Clint Capella, the answer has been yes. The only thing left to prove 
is to do it in the playoffs. But I do see a different James Harden. Well, first of all, I disagree, and here's what I disagree about. He's pretty much been a one-man band since he arrived in Houston, which is why it was such a big deal that he got CP3 last season because finally he had a sidekick that was a, a legitimate bona fide star as a number two on that squad. But in terms of the regular season, over the last five and a half years, uh, James Harden, with the exception of the 41-41 and 41 season uh, that they had for injuries and things of that nature, Bickerstaff, McHale, after McHale, got fired and then Bickerstaff took over and what have you. Uh, with the exception of that one season, James Harden has won a minimum of 54 games. 54, 56, 55, 65 last year. They're winning this year. So, again, it points to the fact that we're accustomed to seeing James Harden do what he's doing. Now, from the prolific standpoint of numbers, no. But he's being asked to do more this year in terms of taking more shots. But the manner in which he's doing it and the kind of things that he's been – that he's putting on display – I've seen James Harden do this a lot of times. I've seen him hit threes. No. I've seen him get to the free throw line at will. I've seen him get to the hole. I've seen him score at will. And I've seen him do it dancing. It's not like he's moving without the ball. They're setting screens and picks for him. And all of a sudden, he's catching and shooting. James Harden gets the ball, and everybody moves out but the way. But here's the thing. You're glossing over an important point. I understand your point. You're saying he can do this. He's just being asked to do it more. But here's the thing. You know why Otto Porter has that huge deal? It's because he was playing at a certain level, and they made the assumption as his usage rate goes up, or if we use, he'll maintain that level of efficiency. That's not so easy. James Harden, it's, and that's what the game is always really all about on both ends, offensive and defensive mm -hmm. efficiency, mm -hmm. right? there. So what do you do on each possession? James Harden is unfathomably maintaining his efficiency in spite of an absurd usage rate. That would be hard enough to do. But in the service of a winning team in the Western Conference, it's bananas.